thanks for joining me. Today we're going back to the placemat pouches. If you're new to this channel and not familiar with the placemat pouches, these are beginner sewing friendly pouches that we make out of quilted placemats. This one happened to come from Walmart. This is one of the Pioneer Woman um, placemats, but you can use just about any placemat that you can find. They're generally pretty close in size. And we're going to be using this and we're going to make this version. Now there are 14 different versions of pouches. So I will link the playlist in the description below if you wanna see what other things you can make out of these placemats. But today we're going to be focusing on this one. You can see I added an initial for those of you that embroider, you could embroider. For those of you that have a Cricut, you could use the heat transfer vinyl. But this is just a really nice size pouch. These would make great gifts for the holidays, good for makeup sizes or travel, storage, anything like that. And again, you can use all different types of placemats. So what you're gonna need for today's version is you're going to need the placemat. Again, I got mine at Walmart. You're going to need at least a 12 inch zipper. I happen to be using, a, this looks like an 18 inch zipper. The longer it is, the better. I mean, you don't need it super long, but at least 12 at the very least, if not longer. And you're going to need download the pattern. This is on my website. I'll have this linked in the description below. Make sure when you download this, you just click the button that says download. Don't click PayPal. It's absolutely free. You can download it. You don't have to pay anything, but the PayPal button still pops up. I can't change that. So just click download and you can download that. You're going to want some coordinating fabric cut into one and three quarter inch strips. And this is just to finish off the inside of our seams. And if you want, this is optional to add this little clasp right here. We're also going to use a piece of that fabric for that. Um, I've got my lobster clasp and I'm going to be using some glue, some clips. I'll link all of this in the description below and then my sewing machine. This is very beginner friendly. This is super easy and I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is print out the pattern and cut it out. It does, it's very forgiving. If you want to make it a little bit taller, you can. You want to make it a little bit wider, you can. You can shrink it down, whatever. But you want to make sure that if you're cutting on the outside of the line, you cut on the outside of the line all the way around. Or if you're cutting on the line, just be consistent. What you're going to do is fold your placemat in half. And what I like to do is either pin it or clip it just so that it's going to stay exactly where you want it. So I'm just gonna put a couple of clips in here. We're going to grab our pattern. We're gonna line up the bottom with the fold. And then I'm going to use this, this is a disappearing ink marker. And just making sure that it's straight. And I am centering it with the center pattern on this particular one. And I'm just going to trace. Same thing over here. Once you've got that, you just want to cut that out. Again, making sure that your placemat stays folded. So what I'm going to do is kind of pin it like this, like this. And then I'm going to use my fabric scissors and cut that out. All right, so once you've got that cut out, I'm just, again, just clipping it so that it stays right in half. The next thing we're gonna do is grab a ruler. Any kind of ruler, doesn't matter. I'm using this ruler from my friend, Lolly. And you're going to go to these two corners and you're going to measure one inch up and make a mark and one inch over and make a mark. And then you just want to square that off Same thing on this corner, measure one inch across, measure one inch up, make those marks. All right, and then you can cut those corners out. Make sure you don't overshoot your corners. The next thing we want to do is if you want to add this little piece right here, you're going to take one of your pieces of fabric that's cut to one and three quarter inches wide 
and I just cut the width of my, I had a fat quarter, so I just cut the width. I'm gonna cut off, let's say three inches, plus or minus. I'm gonna take this over to the iron. I'm gonna do, it's folded in half, so I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna fold the centers into the middle, just like this. And then fold it in half, just like you're making bias tape and iron that down. So it'll look like this. We're just gonna run a stitch along the open end and then on the other side, just to match, just a straight stitch. So down one long side and then down the other. Once you have that done, go ahead and snip your strings if you have any. All right, grab my lobster clasp. I'm gonna stick this through. You're gonna fold it together so it looks like that. And then on whichever side you want it on, I prefer mine on the left, but if you want it on the right, put it on the right, it doesn't really matter. You're just gonna go down about an inch and a half to two inches, clip that into place so that it sets on there just like that. Now I'm just gonna run a stitch right along that edge, making sure I only sew through one side of the placemat, just to secure that in place so we don't have to worry about it later. All right, so now, so you're gonna take your zipper and I like to put the pull on the left you can put it whichever way you you like, but I'm, I like it on the left. So we're gonna take the zipper, we're gonna turn it upside down. I'm gonna put it so the pull is slightly off the edge. And I'm just going to start clipping that into place like this. And I find the more clips you use, the better because this is kind of thick. So the teeth are facing down. So it looks like that. The zipper is facing down, the pull is facing down. And you have the edge of the zipper lined with the edge of the bag. Now you're just going to go along and stitch that down. Take your time. Back stitch at the beginning. Back stitch at the end. All right, so it looks like this. This has been stitched down. The zipper looks like it's backwards. You're going to flip this up, flip the zipper up, and that's going to push this lining down. And now we're going to top stitch this down. So when we top stitch this down, it's going to fold this raw edge over under that zipper. We're just going to stitch right along that edge. So you can see there's my top stitch right along there on the placemat side and it enclosed all of that. All right, so now we're ready to add the other side of the zipper. So what you're gonna do is open it up like this. We're gonna turn it like this. And we're gonna make sure that zipper is lined up again. Make sure your sides are lined up. and pin it. All right, so now we're going to stitch right along this side and do the exact same thing we did before. Back stitch at the beginning of the end, securing that zipper to the top of the bag. So it looks like this. So now we need to top stitch that. So in order to do that, you're gonna have to unzip the zipper. So I'm gonna reach inside, unzip this zipper. This is why it helps to have a longer one. Now we can turn it around. This is the side that we need to top stitch. So we're gonna push that zipper up. 
just like we did before and top stitch along here. All right, so the hard part is over. Now we're gonna turn it wrong side out. Make sure that the sides are lined up. Make sure your corner's lined up. Let's pin it. All right, we wanna close the zipper so that it's inside here, but leave part of it open. So I'm gonna close it about that much. Make sense? You're wrong side out. The zipper pull is inside this parameter, but you got it mostly unzipped. All right, now the first thing I'm going to do just to help myself is pin this up here, make sure the zipper is even. Same thing over here. I want to make those teeth right on the top. Make sure the top of the bag is even. All right. So now what we're going to do is take it to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch. And I'm using quarter inch seam allowance on the rest of the bag. You can really use whatever you want. Just be consistent. So we're going to top stitch or not top stitch, but back stitch at the beginning, stitch all the way down, back stitch, just the side. And then you're going to do this side, back stitch, back stitch. Don't worry about the corner yet, just those two. All right, so we've got one side done. I'm going to do this side, same thing. Now, if you don't care about raw edges on your bag, you can do totally skip the part with the binding that I'm going to show you. For right now, I'm gonna pull this, cut off my excess zipper on both sides. Again, that pull needs to be inside the bag portion. All right. Cut off any threads, keep everything neat and tidy. So if you want, you could just take this over and serge or zigzag those edges, and that's what the inside of the bag will look like. On mine, I put binding on it so it looks a little bit nicer on the inside, but you don't have to do that. You can skip this part if you want. So what I'm gonna do, I have my binding that was cut to one and three quarters. And I just, like I said, I just cut a strip off my fat quarter. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer than that side and just trim it. All right, so I cut that just slightly bigger than the side. I'm gonna fold in this corner and fold it back up just so that it's not a raw edge. I'm gonna line that up with the top. I'm gonna put a clip in it. And then I'm going to start stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance right down this edge. Before I get to this end, I'm gonna tuck this corner in, fold it, or you can do it now if you want. It just gives you room to maneuver it in case it's you overshoot it or it stretches a little bit. I'll go ahead and fold it. So I'm going to fold this end in, just like that, and I'm just going to top stitch that, or stitch that down, back stitch at the beginning and the end. So it looks like that. You're going to take this and you're just going to fold it over and around to the other side, clip it. And we're just going to stitch that side down. Again, quarter inch seam allowance is what I'm using or the width of my presser foot. Use what works for you. I'm stitching right along the edge. Okay. So there we just finished that edge. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna cut this strip that's folded in half slightly longer, about right there. 
All right, I'm gonna fold in one end, fold it back up in half. I'm gonna line that end, raw edges with the raw edges, the top of the zipper. So then we're gonna come down here, see how long we need it. Fold that in, fold it back up. And a quarter inch stitch all the way down. Just like that. Push it over. Covering that seam. Stitch it down right along the edge. So we've got both of those seams enclosed. Make sure this top is still open. Now you're going to box the corner. So we're going to open this up and you're going to meet this edge here with the center here. So we're gonna open it up like a sandwich, just like that. And we're meeting that center with the center. Everything should line up nicely. All right, and I'm gonna temporarily clip it. While we're at it, let's go do this side. So you're gonna open it up, put the center with the center, just like that. Clip. And you can go ahead and stitch that down using a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you go all the way from edge to edge. Same on this side. And again, if you want, I'm gonna trim this off a little bit. If you want, you can just serge these edges and skip the binding, but I like the binding. So I'm just gonna grab another piece of my binding. We're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna cut it slightly longer than that corner. I open it up, fold one end in. We're gonna put raw edge to raw edge right there. Clip it and I can cut this a little bit shorter. I'm gonna fold this side in so that it's the right length with that corner. Fold it back up. Just like that. We're gonna stitch that down. Looks like that. I'm gonna flip this around and stitch it from the back side. Same thing. You can clip it if you want. It's a pretty small area. So we've got that side done. Now we need to add the binding to this side. And now it is completely finished. We're going to turn it right side out. Make sure you push those corners out. Sure you push it out on the top. And there you have it. Easy peasy, super fun. Again, if you want to embroider it, you can embroider however you like to do it. Make it yours. I think this is a really cool idea for the holidays 
really easy and expensive. I, I think I paid $3.97 for this placemat at Walmart. So I hope you guys enjoyed placemat version number 14. Again, I'll have the playlist for all the rest of them in the description below the video, as well as the link to download the pattern. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, never stop making. See ya. Bye-bye.